In the late 1990s, South Africa's democratically elected government embraced genetically modified GM seeds as part of our agriculture system. They accepted the myths that were sold to them by the biotechnology industry. Here are some of the key myths that were and are still used to punt GMOs and the stark reality that experience has revealed. We have all heard the argument that in order to feed the world, more food needs to be produced on less land. In order to do this, the biotech industry claims we must focus on advanced and intensive agricultural techniques and technologies that produce high-yielding crops such as GM seed and rely on agrochemicals. Despite the fact that our staple food, maize, has been produced from genetically modified seed on an industrial scale for 20 years, the nation is racked by a double burden where there is both severe undernutrition and overweight and obesity. South Africa has the third worst score for low birth weight in the Southern African region. 40% of the population has low levels of dietary diversity, one of the causes of low weight and stunted growth. Obesity is becoming an epidemic in South Africa. The pie chart below shows the extreme levels of hunger experienced daily by South African households. Embracing GMOs for over 20 years has evidently not resulted in food security. The international community has agreed that GMOs are not the same as their conventional counterparts and must therefore be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis for market approval. This is a long, expensive and onerous process for GM products and is the basis for the claim that GMOs are extensively tested. It is, however, false. Our government relies on corporate science for decision-making. A body called the Executive Council to the GMO Act of 1999 is responsible for assessing applications for new GMOs that will end up on our plates. Our government parrots the biotech industry's position on the safety of GMOs, asserting that scientific evidence to date has shown that GMOs do not pose any new health risks. There is no independent food or environmental safety testing carried out. Accessing the necessary information that is needed for meaningful public participation is withheld by the companies as confidential information. A growing body of independent science, however, is consistently raising evidence-based concerns about the potential long-term impacts of consuming GM foods. Despite consistently making our regulators aware of this independent science, our regulators have chosen to believe in the myth of GM food safety. Agrochemicals are not assessed in the new GMO applications. Despite the promise that GMOs would reduce the need for agrochemicals, the opposite has proven true. However, the Executive Council does not consider the impacts of these toxic chemicals on our health or environment in the safety assessment and approval of GMOs. Again, the safety of these chemicals is left up to the chemical industry to self-regulate, while our authorities simply rubber-stamp their dubious scientific evidence of safety. In South Africa, glyphosate remains largely unregulated and unmonitored, posing risks to farm workers, to the soil, to the environment in general, including water sources, and to people who eat GM maize and soya. A court in the U.S. awarded $289 million to Mr. Lee Johnson in a case against Monsanto as the court said that Monsanto's Roundup was a substantial contributing cause to the non-Hodgkin lymphoma of Mr. Johnson, based on scientific evidence presented. It also found that Monsanto was guilty of malice and oppression in muddying the scientific waters via underhand dealings. In 2015, our government approved Monsanto's drought-tolerant GM maize, known as MON87460. They claim that it will especially benefit smallholder farmers who need new solutions as climate change and drought deepen. Independent scientists agree that Monsanto's GM drought tolerance is bogus. Monsanto inserts a useless gene into non-GM drought-tolerant maize varieties and falsely claims that it confers drought tolerance. It is widely accepted that hunger is not caused by a lack of production, but is instead a complex systemic problem that includes high levels of poverty and unemployment, deep iniquity and the structure of South Africa's food system, which must be environmentally sound, socially just and produce nutritious food accessible to all.